The McGill Bird Observatory is a place where birds are studied. Researchers, or scientists, use nets to capture birds during their migration, in spring and in fall. Once they capture them, they are able to measure them in various ways and answer questions about how much the bird weighs or how long its wings are. They can answer these questions and many more before they release them back into the wild. At the McGill Bird Observatory, they've been doing this since 2004 in an area in St. Anne de Bellevue, Quebec that is owned by McGill University. It's called the Stony Croft Wildlife Area and it's located right beside the Morgan Arboretum, a large protected forested area which is the largest arboretum in Canada. Barbara Fry is the director of the McGill Bird Observatory. The site is really neat. So it's an old farm. We actually once found an old cow skull when we were first cleaning up and it has orchards of, of old apple trees, which um, an expert came and said, oh, these are extremely old varieties. So it's a matrix or a mix of different habitat types. So you have forests on one side, farm fields on another, a small wetland. And having that diversity makes it really interesting for the number of species, not only birds that can be found there, especially considering we're on the island of Montreal. Even if you're not a bird watcher, most people can identify some common species of birds. Some of the birds that people will often see in their backyards include the American robin, the blue jay, the black-capped chickadee, and the northern cardinal. Some of these birds are resident birds, like the northern cardinal and the black-capped chickadee, meaning they live in our area all year long, even through the cold and snowy winter. But others are migratory birds, like the Baltimore Oriole, a species which migrates every spring to Canada from its wintering grounds in more tropical areas from Florida to the southern parts of Central America. Baltimore Orioles, like other birds that breed in the north but winter in the south, come here for the abundance of insects and nesting locations and because there is less competition from other birds they are known for building these nests that hang like a purse in a tree. Many scientists want to study Baltimore Orioles and other migratory birds. And one of the only ways to study them is to try and capture some of them during their migration. Simon Duval is the coordinator at this research facility and he's an expert on birds and their physical features. Simon, which is our coordinator and our bander in charge, is an incredible birder and an incredible human being. Um, he loves birds and he loves what he does and we were so lucky he came to us, I think he was 19 or 20. So he came as a student and he stayed with us and we're incredibly lucky to have him. I think he's one of the top birders of North America. It's funny, it's a, it's a pretty uh, repetitive work because as we, you know, we, we do the same thing every day, but every day is so different. Uh, you know, migration is this really wonderful thing where you can go out on a day and see almost no migrants uh, because, uh, you know, the conditions were bad and they're all sheltered and you just can't find them. And then the next day you come in and they're just everywhere. Like there was this really good, strong arrival. So I think it's that that uh, sort of, you know, surprise in the morning of you never know what you're going to get. That, that, that's the part I like the most, I think, about the work. Anna was the first graduate student that I had the pleasure to work with and she's now taking on a lot of different projects and she is one of the best field managers I've ever seen. So here's a nice male Baltimore Oriole and it's just singing. Hey buddy. So he just got banded. Uh, so we just placed a tiny band on its right leg with a unique number that he's going to have throughout his life. So if he gets caught somewhere else along his migration route, uh, at any other banding station, if somebody finds his bird, then we'll be able to, to tell exactly when was he banded uh, and what age was he banded as. So yeah, so the band doesn't, uh, it doesn't bother the bird at all. It's, uh, it's loose, it can rotate. It's not going to go above uh, 
above its wrist so that's why we have to make sure that we have the right bun size uh, so yeah this is a very nice mail that just arrived probably from the tropics uh, Central America Mexico every time I'm bird banding it's uh, I just feel so fortunate to be able to handle these tiny little birds that migrate all the way to South America to uh, to Central America, to Southern United States. Uh, it's just pretty cool. Uh, I don't know. And every year, so when we do um, map sessions, you get to catch the same bird that you banded last year because they return to the same spot. So it's like seeing an old friend. Like you remember this bird. It's like, yes, I saw you, I saw you last year. I'm so glad that you're back. So it's, I think it's pretty cool that, it, that these birds are uh, migrating very far and coming back to the same spot. Um, tiny little things like how do they do it i cannot even like walk to like two kilometers and they fly like thousands of kilometers like it's crazy <laughs> this is second year uh, bird like remember how i was saying that we can age them by how pointy their tail feathers look like so these ones are pretty pointy uh, we can see how pointy they are so this is a second year bird so this bird was hatched last year and now it's coming back. It went all the way to Central America and it came back. It's crazy how a tiny little bird can migrate so far away and then come back every summer. But yeah, I'm gonna let this guy go. So yeah, so the work that the McGill Bird Observatory does, it's quite important uh, for monitoring the, the populations of these birds, so the numbers of these birds, uh, how they're doing. So by tracking their migration, we know if there's a species that may be in trouble, that they are not as many as they used to be before. So if we can see that, then we can know, we can try to figure out what's happening to them. And they bring the information to us. They fly up far, far away, cover thousands of kilometers in boreal forest, and then come back and they can give us clues about what that health of that ecosystem is. And lastly, they're ambassadors to humans. You can't help but be you know, amazed by watching a bird fly by the colors of their feathers, by the beauty of their song, and that captures the attention of people. It's one opportunity to see birds up close, which we almost never do. Um, and you know, the majority of the birds that we catch are migrants, so they, they don't breed here, they breed in the boreal forest. So our only chance of seeing them in southern Quebec is during that spring or fall migration. And, and you know, generally, you know, very colorful warblers will be very high up in trees, um, and it's kind of hard to to be able to see them and, and witness the, the beauty of them. But when we do banding, we get them in the hand and we can look at the, the plumage criteria. And I think it's a really uh, interesting and, and fast way to get interested in birds. It's a lot of work to monitor bird migration and monitor all the birds that call the Stonycroft Wildlife Area home. In the spring, for 10 weeks, volunteers and staff have to be at the McGill Bird Observatory every morning as soon as the sun rises and stay there until five hours afterwards, always watching the nets and bringing birds in to be banded. In the fall, they have to be there every morning for 14 weeks in a row. But many say it's well worth it because of all the information they gather about the birds and the more they discover about their migration and behavior. Since its beginnings in 2004, they have banded over 84,000 birds and counted over 1.8 million birds on the site in their daily census. For more information, check out their website, oommbo.org. This has been a video to introduce you to this amazing observatory where birds are studied at McGill University. On the McGill Bird Observatory's YouTube channel, you can find more videos about their work that go into more detail about specific topics.